Hey guys, Legion here and welcome back to Unity Park. In this episode, I spent about 10 hours building the best habitat I've ever built in this game for, of course, the one and only Utahrenus. So yeah, welcome to the seventh episode of Unity Park. Uh, now we have gone through all of the other builders at least once and now it's my turn again and after this all of the other builders will have a second turn and then the park will be wrapped up, you know, and we will also get you guys a tour. And just like after the first episode, Caesar Creates will be building after me, so uh, make sure to subscribe to his channel and not miss this episode dropping in one week. And if you all haven't checked out all of the episode yet and haven't caught up with the episodes of this park, make sure to check out the playlist of all of the Unity Park episodes that I've linked at the end of the video and also in the video description. But yeah, with that out of the way, right now in the speed build you can see me doing a plaza that is supposed to connect my build and, you know, sort of the rest of the park with uh, Jurassic Tom's build that was, I think, the fourth build for this park. In between my two turns, uh, five builds have been created in this park and all of them are incredibly amazing and I always had, like, a great reaction to them and uh, all of them are just so unique in their own ways and great builds and for that reason of course you will have to check them out but I'm gonna give a short thought about each of them right now. First we had Caesar's build where he just created this absolutely magnificent lake right at the park entrance and that's just something that I would have never thought of and I think it's a great way of leading the guests into the park because when they enter my entrance you know they can see a couple of habitats then they you know get into the actual park and the first thing they see is like this big overview of this big lake and in the background there's this uh, aviary for some pterosaurs and I think that view just looks absolutely amazing and then also the habitat he did and also like how he tried to blend my building style into his with like lining his path with rocks or just doing like little foliage and rock clusters like I do in his habitat. And then next up it was of course Crazy Cat Mary's turn and the crazy in her name really uh, came out to shine in this build I feel like because she was just, she just straight up created a huge mountain uh, behind Caesar's build which I think is an awesome focal point for the park and really could be on the logo of the park you know this uh, huge mountain with the visitor center at the top and I really like the idea how the monorail sh sort of uh, snakes up onto the mountain that also looks really nice and then I tried to you know I, th I feel like uh, this build really dictated a bit of uh, the vibe that I try to give to this park right here, the identity of the park, because I get, uh, put, uh, I built like a couple of mountains right here as well, so of making this a mountainous park, and I also connected my build with the monorail right here, as you can see, and then, um, you know, I took her monorail from her build, connected that all the way over here to my build, and then from there on I created a glitched monorail that goes through like a mountain, and then continues into another section of the park where someone else would build. And then next came the section that I'm currently connecting with the rest of the park, that I'm currently you know, connecting my section 2 with this plaza right here, and that is uh, Tom's build, and that was also a completely crazy thing. He just uh, built two huge valleys as habitats, uh, made a tour go through it, and then put lights everywhere, and then at night time that looks absolutely magnific magnificent. I think it's just an awesome idea in this build, and that is just really what you know Jurassic Tom is known for, creating like these crazy ideas in this game, and sort of, you know, you know, just building them in Evolution 2, uh, as he did right here. And then in between the two habitats, he created like a plaza that connects them both with the tour, and from this plaza on, I will be creating my section, as you can see right here. Again, I've mentioned this like a couple of times now, but uh, yes, just so you guys understand what build I'm connecting this to. And then after that came Python section, and I, I don't really want, like, I don't think I'm supposed to choose favorites right here, but that was probably my favorite build up to this point. And like, I really just love uh, the details that he put in there. And also the idea, because, uh, you know, we didn't have a main street yet for our park. So behind my entrance, where I had like this monorail arch and was like, okay, here someone can connect the park and have like an overview over the entrance. Um, they had, there he decided to create a main street and in typically Python fashion, he just did like awesome path stuff, uh, I think his pathwork looks really great on there, I really like the oval that he built, that was also the technique that he used for that, and then behind that he did a San Diego arena for the T-Rex, uh, so the T-Rex is already in the park in the main street, fittingly enough, uh, which I think is a cool idea, and then uh, behind that he actually uh, got inspired by a habitat I built for the Pyroraptor, but basically upscaled that and made it a little different and then built it for the T-Rex, which I thought was really cool and also fun to see for me because he took inspiration from me and made uh, an even better build from that, from what I think. And then last but certainly not least, uh, before my build right here, it was the turn of Montgomery Rex and actually our builds are completely disconnected, uh, but what he built was basically next to 
pythons area and also behind my entrance he connected all of that up and uh, built a couple of habitats uh, one for the morris intrepidus the metric canthosaurus and the stegosaurus and i really like his stegosaurus habitat i love how he used uh, the height elevation from pythons build uh, as a backing of that habitat i think that looks really great he also added uh, hotel sections right there also really nice path work and just a great connection to the park instead of really building like a big new thing he connected the park which i'm also sort of trying to do right here with my build and sort of i'm trying to make a connection point basically for the other builders to know where to connect the park but after all of that rambling about the other people's builds let's actually get to talk about my build that i'm doing right here you can see in the background as the speed build and this build took quite some time but i think uh, that's just usual for this park right now because uh, everybody's doing like big builds so i also decided to just build a big habitat and have a lot of plazas around it but what you already saw me build uh, whilst i was talking about the other people's uh, things i was building like a plaza and that plaza was basically to connect uh, Tom's build right there and then I decided to also put a monorail station right there to have the park connected via monorail because uh, Crazy Cat Mirror already placed down the monorail so I thought I'm gonna be the one to connect that monorail and have it like go uh, through uh, going uh, make it go along uh, Tom's first valley habitat and I think that looks really cool and gives like an even more dramatic effect to his habitat and works it very well into the park and then uh, you go basically up, uh, you go up a bit of an elevation and then you lead into this area right here. And that is where the habitat actually starts for the Utah Rennes, of course. And in the background, what you just saw me build was, or what you maybe even saw, seeing me still build, I'm not sure how fast the speed build is for this. But uh, I'm building like an arena thing for the Utah Rennes, so there's like one section. I've already done this for the Utah wrapped up uh, when the DLC actually released, but now I'm doing like a bit of a just upgraded version i'm putting more detail into this right here and i think this one looks quite a bit better and it's sort of sunken into the ground so you're at the level of the plaza and you go downstairs into the like you go, walk down into this viewing thing and i think it looks really cool so there would basically be a show and you could watch the utah Rennes, uh, feeding area right there and see them you know hunt something or do something right there for the whole Utah Venice habitat in general, I decided to go with a tropical theme because I think in this map, like this map is a pretty special map, I think, uh, compared to the other maps and the other biomes because in this map, I feel like the vibe is just very specific and uh, I think that a tropical biome works, works very well in this, especially with... Uh, if you get the fork from the tree brush into your habitat, that also looks really cool. And with the whole uh, moist looking, I think that the... Just a brush, the grass brush, uh, the usual terrain brush looks really moist, you know, and uh, the whole biome looks really moist and that's also what's represented in the trees with all of the lushness on them and them basically being like swamp trees. So I decided to go for a tropical biome because I think that works very well and also with the fern brush. So basically I had a lot of placeable foliage to place right here and I had a lot of scrolling to do which was really annoying and I think all of us builders know what I mean because when you're in the decoration tab for the trees you need to do so much scrolling to go in between the biomes and get all of your trees because I used the tropical foliage, I also used the tiger foliage for the bushes of course then i used uh, the temperate foliage for the smaller bushes and the, uh, the temperate tree trees and then i also used the mediterranean foliage for the mediterranean trees so there was a lot of scrolling involved with uh, with the building this foliage right here also because the build in general was so long i didn't record most of it and also the speed build right here is i think all oh, almost just half of the uh, total time that I actually spent building. I cut out most of the habitat decorating because it was all just the same, a lot of scrolling as well, as I already said. And uh, right now you're also going to see a bit of, uh, like in this people you're gonna see a little bit of habitat building where I'm gonna be using rocks, uh, or a lot of the foliage that I just mentioned. And then the rest of the habitat was just the same. Uh, the same rocks I placed on, used the same foliage and used the same techniques. Uh, so. The whole habitat of course looks cohesive and now you already will know from a speed build how I built all of the foliage and how I decorate the habitat but you won't have to watch the entire process of it because it will probably get quite boring after like a long time of just placing the same things. 
So but yeah, what also was really I would say the most fun part about building this thing is that I basically could just take all of the ideas I had for a habitat, like all of the cool habitat ideas I could think of and just mash them together and put them in one habitat right here. Because when I'm usually building a park, you know, I want to, like I have one idea and I use it for one habitat and I have another idea, I use it for another habitat and so on and so on. But uh, right here I'm only, like this is my last time building this park, so why not just build everything all at once? Um, uh, so yeah, I already from the beginning I had planned, I, I thought, I already had planned out pretty much what I, what I was going to be building for my second turn on this park and that was like a Uteranus uh, jungle type, type habitat and also this arena thing that I built uh, also was already planned out. But then basically I added quite a lot of more ideas to this build right here, for example a glitched monorail, so I added a glitched monorail uh, in between building because that took a long time because this park is getting a bit laggy and I didn't want and it's dangerous you know sometimes it crashes uh, when you use the move tool so I had to always move the monorail once and save the game and then save again and so it was a really long process so I didn't record it uh, for doing the monorail glitch but basically the monorail glitch I is going through this habitat without a monorail on it I just uh, used this as a bridge for the truck tours which I think is such a cool trick and I really love doing it so I also put it in this habitat and then another trick I did right here, another fun thing is uh, using the monorail tracks and sinking them down at both ends. And if you just use one track, it's, it's a bit hard to explain, but if you just use one long track and you sink down the terrain at both ends, then in the middle you will have a really low down monorail. And then uh, if you do a lot of them, you can basically create a monorail, uh, a monorail roof like you would usually do, but it's pretty low to the ground. And then I decided to do that and use that as an area for uh, the basically the baby Uteranus. And for the baby Uteranus, I of course use Morus Atrapidus because that's the best species to recommend me that. And sort of, you know, uh, Rob Earth sort of gave me that idea. He thought he told me that he thinks they work very well as babies. So shout out to him and then when I had this idea to do like an indoor section for this habitat, I was like, okay, why not just make it do, uh, make it a baby thing, and then have the Morris Intrepidus in there, and then also have like a fake nest in there where I basically use uh, the tropical rocks for the outside, and then use the Mediterranean rocks as you know the fake eggs, and so basically we now have like a baby section in this habitat, and I also cut that off with the invisible fence, so the Uteranus won't go in there, and the Morris Intrepidus, Morris Intrepidus will actually stay in there because you know that's how it would. You know that's how it would uh, be in the habitat and that's how it was is supposed to be you know because they're supposed to live in two separate sections basically so i thought that that was a really cool idea having like that one little roofed uh, baby area basically i also had quite a bit of inspiration uh, for this build like i took a i had quite a bit of uh, you know just pictures of plaza designs for this build and uh, i think in the beginning of this build you can see me pull up one of them and that was for the plaza right there and that design with having like the multiple circles, like the circle that uh, is sort of cut off by multiple circles, it's hard to explain again, uh, just you know with uh, having it filled with water and it turned out quite a bit different than the inspiration but you know it helped me you know get an idea and then I also had a really cool path art design that I thought looked really really great and I wanted to replicate that uh, basically behind the habitat, that is uh, the last thing I would be building in the speed build is the plaza behind the habitat and you will see what I ended up building right there but I wanted to do like a really really cool path art that I saw um, but that just ended up not working, I tried to build it in evolution 2, I tried to build it uh, basically as I said and it did not work out and it just didn't look good and didn't really come close to the picture. Uh, maybe I'm gonna post it later on the community on my community tab uh, what you know the inspiration was how it actually turned out and that's then you will see why I didn't post it and uh, why I didn't end up building it in this uh, build I mean and I ended up just going for something different just a flowing path and then having like these uh, organic shapes cut out and then having like plants inside of that and you will see what I mean because you will see me actually build that and then also see that finished in the cinematics at the end. So yeah, now uh, let me quickly uh, you know, get uh, an idea of what I've already said. So uh, I've already built, uh, you know, I've already talked about the little arena thing that we have right there. Uh, that is one viewing area. And I built another little uh, secluded viewing area that you just saw me do, uh, where I uh, did also later place a food truck. And I so was supposed to also place some chairs and tables right there, but I forgot. So I'm I just told I'm just gonna tell Caesar to actually. Uh, build that and place down a couple of those right there or maybe I'm gonna do it myself later when the park is finished and um, because then 
you know, just having an empty plaza with a food truck doesn't really make sense, you know, there need to be the tables and chairs and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's one viewing area where the guests get like an elevated view and they look down uh, and can see the little lake in the habitat where Utah Renners actually drinks from. Because, you know, they also need to have a water source and not just food. And yeah, I thought that was the best area where to put it. And then uh, I also have another viewing area inside of the little nighttime habitat or little sheltered habitat for the baby Uteranus or the Morus Andrepidus. And I think, yeah, just having a viewing gallery right there, that was pretty much, I think, the best thing instead of having like a fence. So the guests really have like a, a you know, their babies are like protected from the guests and uh, the guests don't really, you know, get as close to them with like having it be a fence and maybe like touching them because that shouldn't happen because those are the babies of Zutarenus and I imagine that if that was going to happen like this the same thing with birds uh, if you touch like a baby bird then uh, it, it will have your smell and then the parents will reject it and they won't uh, accept it as their family member anymore and I think the same thing would happen of course with dinosaurs because uh, dinosaurs are birds as well so yeah that's why I place a viewing gallery there instead of having it open or having a fence right there also, uh, a little funny thing is that the Morris Intrepid is, is actually already in the in the park. As I said, in Montgomery's build, he, in Montgomery Rex's build, he actually built a Morris Intrepid habitat. But I thought, yeah, I'm just gonna use it as a baby anyways, because it's supposed to be, you know, a baby Uteranus and not a Morris Intrepid. But yeah, right here you can actually see me build the last viewing opportunity for this habitat and that is like a sort of semicircle, or not really a semicircle, but like a little area of a circle and that is lined completely with viewing galleries, having multiple viewing galleries there, so it just creates a big viewing area for the guests. And I think that's also a nice uh, little thing and basically they get a view into one of the more open areas of this habitat because it's supposed to be like a jungle so it's more foresty but this is one of the more open areas of the habitat. And then if you, uh, like from the view of these viewing galleries in the background you will see the monorail track um, that is used as a bridge in this habitat, as a bridge for the tour truck of course. And uh, I decided to put some mortar walls next to that and I think that looks really really sick and I think it's probably my favorite use of the bridge right here of the bridge trick with the monorail glitch right here because uh, it just looks like it's a wall you know it's like a sort of wall from like some kind of temple or some kind of ancient uh, structure in the jungle uh, and then the monorail not the monorail the truck tours are just going on top of that and I think that looks really cool and I sort of got that inspiration from a zoo that I actually went to where uh, the tigers had like a, a habitat where basically the walls, um, for, it was like an Indian temple design and then the walls uh, between the little secluded areas were actually where the guests would be walking on top and you had like a top down view into the habitat and I think I re replicated that uh, quite nicely right here with the tour and the uh, little Malta walls. So yeah. And then also the viewing area also has some monorail, uh, just monorail structures uh, in front of it because I really wanted to balance out all of the monorails that we already have in this build uh, with the uh, roof for the baby Utah Renaissance station and then also the uh, just the bridge you know for the truck tours also in this build. So I also had like a monorail circle, a circle of monorails uh, right in front of the baby Utah Renaissance thing and then right there and I think in general that really balances out the whole amount of monorail right there. And it's kind of funny that I'm the I'm sort of the monorail man, this monorail builder of this project because my first build already I lined a lot of the stuff with the monorail and made it really a dramatic entrance in that way. And then in this build I did two monorail glitches and also used a lot of monorail in the build and also did like a monorail roof. So uh, that's kind of funny that I'm... And I, th I don't think uh, any of the other builders have really used the monorail as much in their builds uh, as me, uh, apart for transportation in Miri's build. So yeah, I'm sort of the monorail master of this build right now. But yeah, now that we are getting into like the last uh, couple of minutes uh, of the speed build, like the last minute or something of the speed build probably, and I just want to say that I really like how this habitat turned out. I put a lot of time and effort into this and a lot of ideas went into this and a lot of different you know I just took a lot of ideas and put them into this habitat and in general I really really like how this habitat turned out and I would probably I think I can confidently say that it's probably the best build I've ever done this game the best habitat at least and I just really love like all of the different plaza designs I uh, especially the one with like um, the uh, the what was that the little viewing uh, theater or something 
and that plaza just was a pretty spontaneous idea and I actually made, managed to make it like a cool thing with like the two circles, uh, you will see that in the cinematics. So yeah, I really like how this build turned out, probably my best build ever. I tried to hold back with the details in some little areas, but in some areas I just did my usual uh, lot of detailing and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this build too. So yeah, now you guys can see the whole build finished in the cinematics. First the plaza next to Tom's habitat with the monorail going th right through the mountain, a really cool plaza design. And then a whole overview of the whole build, which I just think looks really, really cool with the tropical habitat and just all of the plazas and the way the, pa the path uh, in general flows and all of the different aspects. And I just think that also this arena, this little arena theater thing looks super satisfying. That turned out quite nice. And then after that, uh, you're getting a little shot of the baby area with the most intrepidus, which I think was quite nice as well, a cool idea. And then also last, a little overview of the finished plaza where I just filled in the path of camera and also the little areas with some bushes and some rocks as usual. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this build as much as I did. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See you guys in the next one. Subscribe to the channel for sure. Subscribe to all of the other builders and bye bye.